welcome back to my channel. So for today's video, as you guys can see by the title, we are doing a hermit crab tank setup. And I know there's a lot of you who are gonna be really excited for this video. I would say my number one requested video to make has got to be about hermit crabs. You guys love the hermit crabs. I know that I don't show them as much as a lot of you wish that I would. But you guys know I've said it time and time again in every single hermit crab video. There is a reason for that. While I do have hermit crabs as a pet, and I've had them for over nine years, and they are doing amazing, I do not condone owning hermit crabs, and I really don't encourage it. I get a lot of people asking me all the time, well, then why do you make hermit crab videos? Why do you have them if you don't support people buying them? And that's because I did get them almost 10 years ago. That's a long time ago. Yes, I got them. Would I get them again? No, I wouldn't. But of course I do have them and I obviously love them and want to give them the best life possible. That is my responsibility as their owner. And I know that regardless of whether I would like people to get them or not, they are sold at every beach gift shop that you could possibly visit on the coast. And I know this, and I know that people are going to buy them regardless, especially kids and parents who are uneducated on their care. So that's why I do continue to make videos like this so that I can help owners of hermit crabs like you. Hermit crabs are very, very delicate animals. And unfortunately, about 100% of them that you will find for sale in beach shops or stores or even pet stores, they are all wild caught and it is extremely sad. They stress extremely easily and nine out of 10 times, they pass away from stress before they even make it to the store for sale to you. It's really sad and they're honestly extremely misunderstood and taken for granted by the pet industry and it's really awful. So that's why I always put these disclaimers in my videos. While yes, I am showing you guys how you can properly take care of your hermit crabs and keep them alive for 10 to 20 years because yes, they can live up to 20 plus years. It's really hard to know exactly how long they can live. There's been reports of them living 30 years and some people can't get them to live more than a couple days due to improper care and very high stress like handling and things like that. It really does depend on the level of care, the health of the crab, and the amount of stress and handling that you put on your crab. I never handle my crabs. I treat them very delicately because they are very delicate, high stress animals. So I've had mine almost 10 years. But again, while I am making this care video for you guys, I don't want to encourage anyone to go buy crabs. If you are interested in owning hermit crabs, believe me, I see the appeal, I understand it, but please do not buy them or support the industry. If you are wanting some, try to adopt. They are always on Craigslist. I can literally go on Craigslist any time of day and they're on there. All right, so you guys knew that after I redid my pet room, I told you guys I was gonna be upgrading the hermit crab enclosure and I'm excited to say that I finally got them a brand new Exoterra. I got a super good deal. I got this new Exoterra, which is a medium low. It's a 24 by 18 by 12 inches high. It is the Exoterra equivalent to a 20 gallon long tank, which is what my two crabs are currently in. I got a really good deal on this Exoterra. Someone was selling it for half the price that it is brand new. These tanks are normally about $150. I got it for half the price with a free brick of EcoWorth and also some moss, which I won't use, but it did come with it. I always buy my Exoterra secondhand because you can get them so much cheaper than brand new, so I highly recommend checking Craigslist and Facebook for not only Exoterras, but also your hermit crabs. All right, guys, I'm really excited to show you guys the crabs and their new setup. Let's go set it up. All right, guys, so please forgive this angle. We are doing this inside, not outside, so this is pretty much the best that I can do. I'm gonna get behind here. Don't worry, I'm not gonna stand in front of it, but I wanted to show you guys the Exoterra. I know it looks really similar to the 18 by 18 that lemon is in but it's actually a 24 by 18 deep and then 12 inches high so it's actually really nice and then of course it has the background this is a brand new exoterra it's never been used apparently the guy who had it was gonna get a frog and then he changed his mind i don't know all right so we're going to open it and i'm gonna zoom in so you guys can see it better while i'm setting it up so i do have some eco worth he also sent some moss, um, but I'm not gonna use it. And then there is an Exoterra catalog inside, which is actually kind of nice. I actually didn't know this was in there. All right, so while this is a brand new tank and it's never had anything in it, we're gonna give it a good wipe down anyway, and then we're gonna set it up. Okay, so here we are. This is a week later from the clips you guys just saw. I went to film this video, like I said, a week and a half ago, but SpongeBob was molting. It's very important never to disturb molting hermit crabs, so I wanted to make sure that he could finish molting, so I gave him another week and a half, and he finished, he resurfaced, so SpongeBob and Gunner are now done molting completely. Everything's good and we can go on and set this up and move them in here. You guys can see I have them all ready to go. They're soaking in some water here in this giant measuring cup. There they are, you guys can see them here. All right, we're gonna finish setting up the enclosure and you guys can see them later whenever we put them in there. 
I already gave it a good wipe down the day we brought it home, so it's ready to go. You guys can also see I already have my heat source here on the side. This is a heat pad that accommodates a 40 gallon breeder. It's a large heat pad and it works great for giving hermit crabs heat. Obviously never put it on the bottom of the tank because you don't wanna burn your hermit crabs while they're molting. So always putting the heat pad on the side is best and I've already adhesed that so now this is just completely ready to set up. All right, so really quick, I wanted to show you guys a step that is very important before setting up your hermit crab enclosure or even if you're just doing a clean. We are gonna be boiling all of the decor and shells and wood that goes into my hermit crab tank before we reset it up. It's really important to always boil everything that you would normally put in your tank, including empty shells so that you get out any bugs, any bacteria, anything like that before you reuse it in a new tank setup. I'm gonna show you guys right now what I do for the plants. The easiest thing is to have them on a string and obviously they're plastic so you don't wanna boil them but I do like to dip them just like so. This sanitizes them really well. Just give them a second and then I take it out and you can lay it over to the side and I basically do that with everything. Here's some wood. So basically, I'll just take this piece of wood and then dip it in there. Obviously, get as much of it in there as you can. Here's a small piece. We just take it in there and we just boil it for a few seconds just to make sure that we sanitize it really, really well. Do the same thing with all empty shells, making sure that there are no crabs in any of your empty shells. It is so important to triple check your shells before putting them in the boiling water. Obviously, there's no crabs in the shell, so I can drop it in, let it boil and sanitize completely, and then we take it out and set it aside and let it dry completely before adding it to your new enclosure. All right, I finished boiling most of this by dip boiling and then also soaking a few of the things in the water for quite a bit. We have a few more plants to go and then we're done and we'll be ready to set it up. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is pour all of our eco earth in here and then we have to make sure that it's really moist with some dechlorinated tap water. Now obviously you can see that the front of the exoterra isn't quite six inches, so we are gonna make it a lot deeper back here and on the sides and then it will be shallower in the front, which is perfect because we can put the water bowls and food bowls up front where it's shallower and then we can make it a lot deeper for them for digging in the back. I'm gonna close these doors while I'm pouring this in, just to minimize the dust. All right, now that I have all the eco in, we're gonna dump this dechlorinated water in really good, and then we're just gonna get in there and make a mess, honestly. Definitely want it really, really moist, where you can basically mold it with your hands and it's not dry. As you can see, the substrate that I've chosen to use is EcoWorth. I don't use sand in my enclosures, but you absolutely can use a mixture of half and half if you want. The Hermit Crab Association says you can use half sand, half EcoWorth, or just EcoWorth by itself. I will link my resources in the description down below if you'd like to read more on that. A lot of people hate that I choose to use just EcoEarth in my enclosures, but personally for moisture wise, I never have a problem with EcoEarth as long as I mist it down daily, which I don't mind doing. Obviously that's part of care. I really like EcoEarth and I find that it does really, really well for them and I've never had an issue with it. All right, so here we have the Hermit Crab's new bowl that I just bought them. If you guys saw my recent vlog where I went and bought them some new dishes, this is their new food bowl. It's a corner dish and it is by Flukers. I love it so much. So we're gonna go on and give them some new food. Here I have some green Greens, and we're also gonna chop up some bell pepper and also a small strawberry. They really love fruit and veggies and it's really good for them. Fresh food is always important for your hermit crab, so please, please provide it for them. Don't just provide store-bought foods. I love to give my hermit crabs a really big variety. If you guys have ever watched my videos, you know that, so we're gonna do that today. Some yellow bell pepper, which I know they're gonna absolutely devour. And then we're also gonna chop up this red strawberry really, really well. And I know they're gonna love this. There we go. And then I'm also gonna give them some store-bought food. I know a lot of people hate store-bought foods, but, but I really like to give my hermit crabs a lot of variety and that means giving them lots of options. All right. 
All right, so here is the variety of food that I got for my hermit crabs. We're gonna go on and put that in here now. I think we're gonna put their food over in this corner and that'll be perfect for them. All right, so now we're gonna add in the decor. I have a really big plant here that I think the hermit crabs would absolutely love to climb on. So, so we're gonna stick that in there first. Then of course we have a little wooden log half hide here, which they love. And then they have this tree that they really love to climb. I think I'm gonna put it over on the cool side. There we go. Perfect. They are gonna have so much stuff to climb and so many places to hide in here. Oh, I love it. And then of course, you cannot forget to add in all of your hermit crab spare shells. It's really important to provide your hermit crabs with lots of shells for them to be able to move into that are slightly bigger than the ones they're currently in. My rule of thumb is provide two to three extra shells per hermit crab. So if you have two hermit crabs, I would provide at least six or more. So they have plenty to choose from. These have been completely boiled and now they are completely cool to the touch and dry. So they are completely safe to add into my hermit crabs enclosure. These are polished round turbo shells. If you guys like my shells and you wanna see a whole video on how I pick them out, where I buy them from, and how I size them for my crabs, I will leave that video linked on the screen in the corner. I have an entire video all about hermit crab shells. All right, I think we're gonna place a lot of these over in this corner, kind of like a little shell mall so that they can go over here and change or choose or climb on them or do whatever they like. All right, now we're gonna fill their water bowls. We have some dechlorinated water here. And then this is gonna be for their salt water. This is their little blue salt water bowl that we boiled and now it is completely cool and ready to put in here. All right guys, here's the finished enclosure and I think it turned out so nice. So here's pretty much what the inside looks like. There are a ton of climbing spaces and hiding spots for the hermit crabs. I absolutely love it. I think it turned out really, really nice and I think they're absolutely gonna love this. You guys can see I have my heat pad over here as a heat source on one side of the tank. This will be the warm side. Here we have my new rock water dish by Flukers. I showed you guys in a recent vlog I bought that. That's what's in this corner. Then we have our salt water dish, which is always blue. Then we have our corner rock food dish over here, which I absolutely love and I think that they're really gonna like it too. And you can see I have their variety of food in there, fruits, veggies, and a little bit of store-bought food. Then we have a bunch of extra shells. We also have one over here. It's really important to provide extra shells for your hermit crab. And it also helps if you lay them with the hole facing up so they can move into them really easily. I always lay my hermit crab shells upside down so that the hole is always facing up. Then we have some various wood here. We've got a couple of these driftwood pieces. We got one of those here. And then we have our little half log hide, which they love going in. Then we have just a bunch of greenery, a bunch of fake plants. We also have the pineapple house for SpongeBob hidden back here. I decided to move it to the back um, just for privacy, but they do love climbing in it and climbing on top of it. So we left that back there. And then we just have, again, a bunch of fake plants. I need to tape this one. I usually tape this one by the string so that it hangs because the suction cup is actually trash, but it's fine. I'm gonna tape that back here, probably like that. And then they climb on this one too. And then I have some greenery that I got from a hobby store. That's what all of this is. I got a big chunk of this back here and then we have their tree which is probably their favorite piece of greenery to climb on it's really tall and I love this tree to death and they like to climb up in it and I always see them hanging in it and it's got a really heavy base so it doesn't fall I absolutely love this tree it was a very good purchase but that is pretty much it I absolutely love it I am so grateful to finally have a front opening exoterra oh my gosh you guys do not even know and again, this is a 24 by 18 by 12 inches tall. So it is the equivalent of about a 20 gallon. All right, here are the babies. I'm sure they are so ready to get out and get climbing. I know they are ready to explore. So we're gonna go on and put them in there now. All right, there's Gunner and there is SpongeBob. Have fun exploring babies. Hermit crabs absolutely love whenever you change things in their enclosure. Obviously you wanna make sure not to stress them, but they really do love exploring new territory. So I think that they're gonna love exploring in here and getting to know where everything is. I think they're gonna enjoy it a lot. You can see they're really small. Obviously SpongeBob is my bigger one. He's quickly growing though. He just molted again, but you can still see they have tons of room and oh, I'm so excited. You can also see their water dish is massive compared to them. <laughs> like it's kind of funny. But I'm glad that I got a deep water dish so they'll be able to soak in everything. I think they're really going to enjoy it. Gunner is already crawled back in the back going to hide, I'm sure. You can see him back there quickly going to dig in and hide, I'm sure. They're going to have so much fun in here. 
All right, guys, that is it for this new and improved hermit crab enclosure. I gotta get the lid on here, but they are completely done. I'm really gonna enjoy watching them explore the new tank. All right, guys, that is it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Don't forget this video is merely a video showing you guys how to set up a proper hermit crab enclosure and some of their care. I am in no way, shape, or form condoning or encouraging you to go buy hermit crabs from the store. In fact, I am begging you not to. All right, guys, that is it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I will see you guys in my next video. Be kind. Bye.